So today, as you see, I'm commuting on this blue rock. What's going on everyone? Hope your day is going all right. I'm just freezing, commuting to work, and uh, I'm on the Bullet Blue Rock today because uh, I had a few requests to make some more videos with this bike, and uh, that's what I'm doing. The problem is that it's quite cold in the morning here. Now is uh, four degrees Celsius and it's uh, quite cold. I don't usually commute on this bike. Why I don't commute on the Blue Rock? Well, there's two reasons for that. First is fuel economy. So even though this bike is just a 125, it doesn't get good uh, uh, fuel economy. It actually uses twice as much fuel as, as the Grom. And I figured out that it's actually more economical to use my CB500, which is a 500cc engine. I don't know if it's uh, just because it hasn't been broken in or I've been revving it a lot because it's really slow. But it's really, really, well, for a 125, it is bad on fuel. And the second thing, if you watched my... Uh, other bullet uh, blue rock videos you would know that this bike is not reliable and uh, the engine cuts out when uh, I'm doing slow speeds and uh, this is only when uh, like early in the morning when I do start the ride but I do leave it to uh, warm up for at least 10 minutes so the engine is warmed up but it still cuts out. It cuts out when, uh, let's say I'm in third gear and I uh, pull the clutch in to coast, engine cuts out, or when, let's say I'm sitting at the lights in uh, neutral and the engine just cuts out and it struggles to start. And uh, one of my viewers, uh, James Niels, and I do hope I'm pronouncing your name correct, mate. Uh, he said that uh, it might be uh, the valves. Uh, it needs uh, the valve clearance done. And uh, I think he's right. And uh, that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check the valve clearance. The good thing on this bike is and this is why i like small bikes because uh let's say i would have to do the valve clearance on a bigger bike a 600 on a conventional 600 engine i would have a, a straight four engine uh, with 16 valves i don't know if you ever did um, valve clearance on the inline four engine but uh, there are a lot of things that you have to get out of the way. Usually you have to take the tank off, you have to get the airbox off, depending on the bike. You have to remove and disconnect a lot of the hoses and wiring to actually be able to take the valve cover off. And then you have 16 valves that you have to uh, check and adjust. On this, you don't have to take anything off. It's really simple. On this, I think it's going to take me 10 minutes. And another thing that I wanted to say is that with uh, low mileage bikes or even brand new bikes, the valve clearance to be off, it's not really unheard of. Not with Japanese bikes, obviously, but uh, with Chinese bikes, with Italian bikes, some of them uh, during PDI, you do have to actually adjust the, the valves, which doesn't say much about the quality of the product, but uh, it's just something that you have to do.
Now that we have the bike on the ramp, on the left side of the engine we have this small cover which we're gonna remove with a 9mm hex key. I did put some electrical tape on the hex key uh, in order not to scratch the paint. We're gonna remove this cover and we're gonna expose a 14mm nut which we're gonna use to put the engine on uh, the top dead center. On the top we have this nut which we're gonna remove in order to see the alignment. So on the engine if you look through this hole you see that there is a line which you have to align with the mark on the engine case. Now on the other side on the front of the engine we can see the cover for the exhaust valve and on the back of the engine we're gonna see the valve cover for the inlet valve. We're gonna remove those. And uh, I did put some uh, masking tape on the covers in order not to damage the paint and I'm gonna use a 17 millimeter spanner to take these covers off. So now that we have the covers off, we can see the valve adjusters. The tolerance on the exhaust valve is 0 0.08 to 0 0.10 and it's exactly the same adjustment for the intake valve. Now, as you know, this engine is a copy of a Suzuki GN engine which uh, has the valve adjustment surprisingly close to this one. In order to adjust this valve, we're gonna take a 10 millimeter spanner and we're gonna unloosen this nut. We're gonna adjust the top screw with a flat uh, head screwdriver. And then after the adjustment has been done to the correct specification, we're gonna tighten back the nut to check the valve clearance we're gonna use a filler gauge so it's 0 0.08 to 0 0.10 and we're gonna use this to check uh, the distance between the valve and the uh, adjuster to check if the valve is adjusted properly you insert the filler gauge between the valve and the adjuster now the filler gauge should move freely between these two it has to have a bit of resistance but it shouldn't really get stuck and you do the same adjustment on the intake valve as you did on the exhaust valve and now after you did all that you put everything back together and it's time to go for a test ride. So all the issue seems to be solved now. We are gonna have to test ride it a bit more go out with it a bit more but it does feel that uh, the issue has been resolved which is really good so thank you for watching this video please subscribe like and comment and uh, see you on the next one